guys, what's going on? We're back here with a brand new edition of Real Estate Uncensored. Yes, this is Greg, the co-host, taking over the host position because Johnson is somewhere in the U.S. We don't quite know where he is in the U.S., but we're going to figure out where Johnson is on his North American Tour 2017. He is, uh, he is giving me the controls because he did not plan well and left everything back at his hotel. So he's going to be with us for a short bit, and then he is going to go bon voyage. And Brandon and I are going to take this and show you guys how Brandon and took uh, in his first year and sold well over a hundred homes, guys. He has his numbers. He has his entire program that we're going to lay out for you. Well, not we. He is going to lay out for you. Um, so this is going to be a great show. I want you to sharpen your handy dandy foreign writing utensil called a pen. Get out that yellow pad or hobbit pad as we refer to it and take some notes. Brandon is going to blow our heads off with stuff before we get Brandon in. I'm going to bring the Johnson in and welcome Matt from somewhere in the wild, wild U.S. of A. Where are you coming from, buddy? Uh, I'm broadcasting from a Starbucks. I know that's a surprise to everyone involved. Uh, no, I'm, in, uh, I'm in downtown. <laughs> I am in downtown Denver right now, so I'm with uh, Chris Lockhead on the Net uh event ready something something next ready uh next ready business tour chris is speaking tonight uh at a hotel here in downtown denver so we're hanging out uh we're also spending some time with uh with his growth hacker guru nick cullen uh he's been uh his episode of legends and Visions coming out here over the next couple months he's been on, been on fire and all kinds of stuff so just spending some time with those two guys uh and then uh, hanging out with youtube players. hey your day is perfect now, buddy. To put a little bow on that bad boy, Brandon, Brandon and I are just going to make it rain for you. But <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Gregory. So, Brandon, what so, do you want to share friends? my complete? Uh... Huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Let me run the show, damn it. No, pipe down. Uh, Brandon, welcome to the show, man. Tell everybody who you are, where you're from, what you do. Yeah. So, listen, happy to be here. I've been a huge fan of the show for a long time. Uh, again, Brandon Mulrennan from Metro Detroit, Michigan. Uh, been in the business for about 12 years. Half of that was on the mortgage lending side as a loan officer. And then the uh, last half for the last five or six years on the real estate sales side. Dude, that's awesome, man. And you and I were talking in pre-show, just the uh, sheer amount of deals you did the first year. My jaw literally dropped. Uh, I even put hair gel in for this for this you know, interview because I wanted to make sure I look somewhat prevent, presentable when I talk to someone that can do 100 plus deals. Johnson, don't shake your head at me. Um, you know what? I, I've got to dress up for it, man. And I'm glad that you're here. It's an honor to have someone that likes our show and ready to really make it rain. But Matt, what's a question that you were looking at from the uh, lead gen scripts and objections uh, people? What question did you have that you wanted to bring to everybody today? Uh, well, I didn't want to bring any of their questions. I want to bring one of my own, which is uh, <laughs> so Brandon, your your thing is uh, your thing is uh, Fizbos, and really the big question with Fizbos is just how do you keep in touch with them, like beyond that initial contact. So I'm just curious, what's your what's your strategy and how you're setting that up and uh, and how you're keeping in touch with them kind of in that meantime, where you're just trying to add value and keep your name in front of them. Yeah. So my whole my whole strategy with Fizbo starts with a philosophy around being their agent before they believe they need an agent. So when they believe they need an agent, I will become their agent. Does that make sense? That's a long thing. That's the whole strategy. So. Getting into some of the tactics, how I do that is, um, so every Monday I'm, I'm following up, I call it Monday follow-up Fizbos, and I'm following up on how their weekend went with their open houses, how, how did that go. Hmm. Every Friday they get a text message, hey, I'll be available for you, Greg, all weekend if you need anything. And then everybody gets a uh, direct mail piece uh, every two or three weeks. I think uh, your boy just bounced on us, Greg, but oh, there he is. Um, and it's all it's it's all coming from a place of contribution. The way that I have mastered for sale by owners is from a philosophical standpoint of lead with contribution, be their agent until they actually need one, and they will you'll get so many come list me calls, it's insane. What was the genesis of that? I mean, a lot of the times people don't think about it that way. They always think about themselves, not not the FISBO, you know, individual, you know, that, that's going through this process. But you're like, hey, man, I'm your agent. I'm here to help. I'm your backbone. I'm your support system. What, what, when did you make that decision to approach, you know, FISBOs in that in that manner? Yeah. So when I first got into business, you know, a lot of these gurus say, you know, go right after the listing, right after the listing, overcome the objection, go right after the listing. And what I found was you know, 80 to 90% of these for sale by owners were, were ending up listing with an agent and I wasn't freaking getting them. 
And I said, well, what the hell is the deal here? So I flipped the entire thing to be 100% agreeable with the FISBO. When they said things like, you know what? I don't need an agent. I said, I would say things like, you're exactly right. You probably won't. In fact, you could probably sell your house on your own. And I would just be completely 100% agreeable until the day came where they're like, you know what, Brandon? I just can't do this anymore. Why don't you just go ahead and take over for us? So the entire strategy is built on just being agreeable 100%. Interesting. A lot, like you said, a lot of people never really ask about that or never really have that mindset. You know, so how long does it take for people to go from, you know, me, 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 I, I, I as a FISBO to like, dude, this is horrible. <laughs> Please, Brandon, take this yeah. over and take this, take this nightmare off my, off my hands. So what I find is that it's about a 30-day process. From the first day I meet with them doing a preview appointment where they're all excited, I can sell my house, I don't need an agent, I'm going to save all kinds of money, and I'm agreeing with them the whole time. I'm just providing them value, all the documentation that they need to, that they are going to need to sell on their own. And it's about 30 days until they say, shit, dude, I can't hmm. do this. I just can't do this. Dude, yeah, that, that is a, that's one of the things that I think I've, we've heard some other people say, like, hey, so do you have a job, sir? Yes, I do. Do you want another one? Because that's what this is. Selling a house is a full-time job. I mean, the, the art industry gets romanticized continuously on, you know, m you know, media. They're like, ah, you know, Bob and Cindy are looking for a three-bed, two-bath close to Cindy's work, but close to where Bob wants to go surfing every day. Their, 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 their affordability is $7, and we'll see if the real estate agent can make it happen. You know, yeah. and they're like, oh, my God, yeah. I want to live that life. But it's not that way in the business. Not and so, close. no, it's not. So take me through the process. Yeah. Once they once they once they be, start working with you, what, where's the rabbit hole? What do you do? How do you hold on to them? You know, just help me understand. I don't do Fizbos, man. So I got my Hobbit pad out, brother, and I'm ready to take notes. All right. So it all. So the first day they actually come on the market as a for sale by owner. Uh, I'm calling them the second they hit the market because that's when they are the most positive, optimistic, excited about selling their home. I focus on FISBOs, Greg, because it's the easiest seller lead to get to pick up their actual phone, right? They're super excited. They think it's a buyer. So it all starts with the first day they hit the market. So I'm calling them and my whole strategy is built around the for sale by owner preview appointment. I'm usually at their house, shaking their hand, giving them a hug the first or second day that, that they're actually on the market. So I'm, I'm building a relationship and a friendship from day one. And never, ever, ever, Greg, do I talk about listing your home. Uh, you're stupid. You, don't, you, you absolutely need an agent. There's no way you can sell your home. I do the exact opposite. Rather, I tell them, you absolutely can do this on your own. I see about, uh, and I tell them, I give them the stats. I see about 10 to 20% of for sale by owners um, selling on their own. And I tell them up front, there's no reason why they can't be you. Now, I when I take that approach with these, these homeowners, they completely open up to me. So I go to that preview appointment with everything that they're going to need to sell their home. The seller's disclosures, a purchase agreement, a step-by-step -step process roadmap, a marketing plan. I'm giving them everything. I'm arming them with everything that they're going to need to sell their home on their own. That's how we start the relationship. Now, mm -hmm. after that for sale by owner preview appointment, that's when they go into my follow-up system, which is built on a phone call every Monday, a text message every Friday, and a, um, and a direct mail piece every couple of weeks. And so that's we fair. do, yeah, and that's what we do for 30 days until, they, and, until they're ready to put their house on the market with me. And I'm listing, you know, uh, a lot more than I was when I was going directly after the listing, like so many agents are doing. You know, that's something that Matt and I have talked about a lot on, on the show. People have asked us about foreclosures, both on and off air and everything else. And I have said, and I'm so excited that you actually think the same way I do in regards to, look, be the, be the homeowner's biggest advocate. I mean, be their support system, be there in their corner and bring them their disclosures, the contract, bring them, you know, what to be aware of, the pitfalls, you know, bring them the step-by-step -step everything. And with that in mind, I mean, like you said, people at the end of the day, they're just like, oh my God, this is a fucking nightmare. Please, Brandon, take this dumpster fire of a, of a, of a transaction off of my plate. And you step in, you're like, not a problem. Here's the fire extinguisher, put it out and we're off and moving. That's How exactly come more right. agents aren't doing that man so it's a great question and most homeowners ask me the same thing and that's why it's if you take this approach with for sale by owners it actually is extremely simple to become a top listing agent 
because every other agent in the marketplace, Greg, they're being taught, go after the listing, hard sell them, overcome the objection. And that's just not the approach that the for sale by owner wants. And so we, what ends up yeah. happening is we become in conflict with the seller instead of being on the same, uh, from a philosophical standpoint, in the same belief system. So it's yeah. a, a little bit of neuro linguistics and being on that same page with that FISBO until the day where they say, shit, you know what? I don't know if I can actually do this. I'm the first person that they're having that conversation with. Every other agent up until this point, it's an argument and the people are getting hung up on. And that's why most agents, in my opinion, aren't focusing on for sale by owners because of that direct conflict. Yeah, that yeah. is so true. Yeah, nobody wants that, you know, and, and this is something that we've talked about in, uh, in the Get Now Business course. And uh, I think, Greg, you forgot to mention that. So this course is this the whole podcast is sponsored by Get Now Business. Uh, thank did. you, Greg, for, for declaring, <laughs> proclaiming to the heavens that you're going to remember to do that and then promptly forgetting. Uh, but anyway, we talked about this in the live course that uh, you want to treat everyone that you come across as a client before they're a client because that's what makes them want to be a client. Uh, and of course, you would never treat somebody like that if they were already your client. You would not be confrontational like that. You wouldn't tell them that they're stupid for wanting to do something. We would never treat our friends and family that way. And so why would you treat some random person uh, like that? And uh, so I love that approach. It really reinforces, uh, you know, we, it, uh, to me, it's the right approach regardless of what the outcome is. But the fact that you can take that approach and get a better outcome, that's like, that's great. Yeah, you know, and I think, uh, Matt, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. Until agents understand this concept of contribution, um, you know, they're going to have a tough time reaching the goals that they've set for themselves. Um, and I think it's they, they come from uh, uh, having a scarcity mindset where, like, oh, I can't give them too much. I don't want to be their agent. It's the same thing in content marketing. You know, people are so scared to give away their good content where they're like, I want to charge for this. No, 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 no. Give everything away, and then you will uh, attract people that want to do business with you. It's a way easier way to grow a business, in my opinion. You know, Matt and I have done that with our podcast. When we originally started this podcast, um, we did it because we wanted to give back. You and I are talking off air about that. And it's just that well, there's so many amazing real estate agents that either are getting into the business, that are fed complete bullshit, Yep. are in the business are being fed misinformation to keep them from growing or they're being charged an arm and a leg to get the information and you know the agents just can't afford to be in business let alone pay you know a thousand dollars a month seven hundred dollars a month you know for quality high level training and we've found that you know giving all this content out for free just like what you do has been a huge value add for us because we have pe we have people that are coming back to us now after two and a half years and plus, and they're going, oh my God, because of this stuff, you guys are, you, I'm, I'm living the life of my dreams. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And it's it's all coming from the, 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 the not, not the lack mindset, but the growth mindset. And That's right. Once people, agents yeah, and human beings understand that, whew, watch out world, man. It's gonna be a different universe out there. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. I did. Yeah, the, the mindset that you approach it with, like if you approach it with an abundance mindset, you create that abundance if it didn't already exist. I mean, it's already mm -hmm. there. But yeah, I, I love it when you can, when you have the system set up correctly, uh, like you do, uh, um, it, it's really cool that you get not only a, you get to do the process right, but then you get a better outcome out of it because you've set up the system. So that you're giving value in a structured way, like you talked about the Monday call, the Friday text, the mail piece, and stuff like that. Like it just everything is very precisely set up to deliver value, but to deliver value in the right way, right? It still positions you correctly. You're still the you're still the trusted advisor, the respected professional, all that good stuff, right? You're just doing it in a way that's non-confrontational, and because we all know, 80%, 90% of the time. They're only going to interview one person, and that person is going to get the listing and call them you. You're going to win eight out of ten. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we, we, we go as far as, you know, writing their Zillow ad for them, right? Like, hey, your Zillow <laughs> ad, your ad on Zillow is shitty. Let me just write it for you, right? It's just <laughs> always coming from contribution and not having a scarcity mindset. That is insane. You know, let's so let's let's jump down that rabbit hole. What okay, so we're 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 doing that. What's your value adds? Walk us through the process. I know you have all your numbers, I know you have everything. I know that Matt and I have a thousand questions, but I want you to lay out what you do 
and then teach us and then we'll 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 kind of jump in from here on out is that fair to you yeah that's fair so from a value uh perspective when i'm working with a for sale by owner there's really three things specifically that i do that causes for sale by owners to want to do business with me from an attraction standpoint without me having to ask them to do anything number one and uh, this is you know, and this is where Fizbo's really say, dude, why don't ever why doesn't every agent do this? Number one is my easy exit listing agreement. Simply put, if uh, I take away all of their risk from listing their home with me, if they're not happy for any reason, they can fire me. There are no handcuffs. There is no long term contracts with me. And the homeowners, uh, they really appreciate that because, again, it's still leading with contribution. It's putting the seller before myself for their best needs, not mine as the agent. So that's number one is our easy exit. Okay. Number, number two is our smart seller program. And I learned a lot of this stuff from Hoss Pratt when I was going through his training early on. Our smart seller program simply states right in our agreement that that for sale by owner, even while it's listed with us, can still market their home on their own and find their own buyer. And if they do, they don't pay me shit. They don't pay me a commission. Now hmm. the for sale by owner loves that. Right. And how, mm -hmm. how many times has that happened, Greg? That happened. It's happened one time in six years. That's it. Wow, wow. Right. But the for sale by owner's perception of that and perspective of that says, shit, you're willing to do that. And I said, absolutely. It's a win, win or no deal. And then lastly, it's my flexible commission structure. Right. Mm -hmm. So if the for sale by owner finds their own buyer, I will process their transaction as a transaction coordinator for one percent. If I am the dual agent, I'll do it for 4%. And if another agent brings the buyer, it's your typical standard 6%. So it's all about being, uh, having flexibility and treating the seller as the employer and me as the employee, removing all of the risk for them to list their home with me and not giving them a reason to say no. Hmm. That is absolutely yeah. fascinating. I love how you structure that in packages. You know, hey, look, if you if you do it, I'll do it for one percent. You still win. You do it for four percent. You do, you double end it. You double end. You you win. You know, with I get more a raise. in your pocket. You get That's a raise. Right. We actually do the same thing on our team. We offer out the same thing. Hey, our McDaniel Callahan team, do, you know, both sides. We'll do we'll do do it for only four percent. Now in our area, we do it for five percent. You know, traditionally. So the seller goes, hey, I'll say I'll, I'll save you one extra percent, which is X, Y, and Z dollars goes right back to you guys to your bottom line. So it it seems to be effective in 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 Fizbo's. It's effective with you know traditional sales. What the common factor is, the human being that owns the home is putting more money in the bottom line. That's right. And do you do you think that maybe some agents dehumanize? The Fizbo, they treat them like a piece of meat, like a dude treats a girl at the bar, like, hey, come here, hot stuff, smack on the butt, you know, and they want to, you know, you know, take them home immediately because they seem like the, you know, the weak sheep or, yeah. and just, or, or they don't respect them because they're trying to do it on their own. I mean, what is that? What is, where's that mindset disconnect? Because I think what happens is me and my business partner talk about it all the time, you know, uh, especially in real estate, we call people leads. Isn't that weird? And I say, they're not a lead. That is another human being that is looking to sell their home. And until you get that through your mind and understand that you lead with relationship and you lead with contribution, and that's a real family, a real human being, to your point, Greg, until you can understand that, they're not a lead, they're a human being. And it's a, it's a philosophical mindset problem. It's fascinating. You know, we do, all, we do just treat every lead as just... The next cow Never. coming down the, the down down the chute, you know, yep. for slaughter, ready to go. But it, I love that coming from contribution, giving first. The little, you know, the law of reciprocity kicks in big time with you, and I think that could be a major factor for for your true success. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when we sit down with a four step by owner and have those types of conversations, because because it is real. Everything that we do comes from a belief system of giving. And people can really start to see that um, when uh, not only with our programs and our products and our and our, all of the things that we do, but it's who we are. It's really who we are. And it's so different than the masses out there, than the herd out there, you know, all going at this uh, just a completely different way that I don't think uh, I don't think it's working anymore. That old tactic of hard, 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 hard closing, I think, is, is coming to an end soon. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, back in the, back when Matt and I first started the show, and this will relate back to real estate agents, I said, let's let's run ads for the for the podcast. Let's 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 advertise the crap out of this thing. Matt's like, no, dude, no. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring content. I'm like, 
content. It's like, yeah, well, let's bring content. Let's, let's make it so that it's educational so people will, will they'll be attracted to us and not pushed to us. That's right. And you're essentially doing the same thing. You're, build, you're, you're bringing content to these, for, to these FISBOs. Yep. I mean, doing a, doing a residential transaction is like dancing in a minefield. You don't know what you're going to step on next that could uh, literally obliterate, you know, what you, what you, what you have, and what you're building. So, you're showing the path through this, and I, and I love it. I, I used to joke around all the time that I would go with expireds or fizzbos. I don't have it with me in here, but essentially it would be like you know the sold sign. You just know, hey, this is Greg McCain, McCain and Callahan Real Estate Team. You're going to need this when you work with me, and basically just hand them a sold sign, right? Hmm for humor, but I like yeah. your approach way better. Well, yeah, it, it seems to work. I mean, it works really, really well. And not only does it work, um, I hate, and that's that whole thing. Uh, it's real. It's who we are. Like we just want to help people. So it's not a lead conversion tactic. Like that's, that's it, 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 and it is, but my point is it's a real relationship to us. And so um, I treat them just like I would treat my best friend or my brother mm -hmm. or my sister. And I would just help them down the path of selling their home until the, the day comes where they say, you know what, why don't you just do it for me? And so you know, it's just other, this whole attraction thing. Oh, completely agree. And you know, the other thing is, let's say, how many times have they sold? You said one, they've sold, you didn't get paid one time. How many times have they referred you business after they did the transaction with you to their brother, their sister, the mother, the father, their best friend, and everything else? Immediately, immediately. We're getting so many referrals because number one of what we offer that no other agents in the marketplace offer, but number two, it's our entire approach of that giver's mindset and, and the consumer. Unfortunately, these real estate agents out there are giving us a bad name. They are, um, they just got it all wrong. And so when you give to somebody, they want to just give back. Like you said, the law of reciprocity kicks in like crazy. So, does, you know, Marco has a question for you here in the, in the news feed. You know, what's the length of your contract with the, the FISBOs? Yeah, so everything's uh, on a six month agreement. However, with my what my easy exit listing agreement states is for any reason at the very moment where they don't think that I'm following through with what I said I was going to do, or they're not happy with the service that my team's providing, they can fire me at any time. That's the whole thing. There is no handcuff. Actually, I sell against that quite uh, aggressively because I don't think it's fair to the consumer to get locked down to a six month contract with an agent who won't call them back. That's complete mm. bullshit. Yeah, it complete. It really is. And sadly enough, in our industry, a lot of agents in the residential, just tr traditional resale and the for sale by owners, you know, in the expires, a lot of agents just don't communicate. I've had multiple times with agents that, I mean, I had, I had one guy, dude, uh, this guy was a piece of work. He wouldn't never call me. He would only text me after he'd been drinking at night. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, Lori B. That was a disaster. Okay, Brutal. so take me to the next step in your process here. Yeah, so, um, you know, again, it, it starts with uh, preview, follow up, essentially for, it, it could happen as quick as um, a week or two where the for sale by owner gets so beat up and so frustrated with all these uh, knucklehead real estate agents calling them, doing and saying the wrong things. It could be a week or two where they say, okay, come tell me what you can do for us. So mm -hmm. essentially it's, it's a 30 day process of follow up until we're sitting at the table going through, the, through those three value propositions, going through the market analysis and the full listing appointment where they uh, end up signing and, and we list the property and go on the market. So with this type of attitude, there has to be some sort of murmurs taking place in the agent community around you. Do you have haters? Do you have supporters? I mean, are, are people trying to, you know, to emulate you? What's the, what's the, what's the vibe in the big D when it comes to this, this, this tradition that you're setting out there? Yeah, so uh, I love that you bring that up because that's the exact reason, Greg, why I started my private Facebook group, uh, Top Agent Hangout, because this strategy was working so good that I wanted to share it with uh, I wanted to share it with agents from across the across the globe, really. Um, mm -hmm. And we created our eight week for sale by owner boot camp um, that people are going through now. And so to answer your question, people are loving it. Agents are loving it. The consumer is loving it because it's, a, it's such a win-win for everybody. And it's, um, it's less pain for the agent on getting more listings and it's less pain for the consumer. It truly yeah. is a win-win. And so the agent community uh, that are following me on that private Facebook group, um, they're loving it. 
That is fantastic. Is there, is there can, do you want to go over briefly what's in that eight week program? So if people are kind of wanting to sign up. They can, I mean, more than we already have is, I mean, is there a secret sauce in there? We don't want to divulge. No, no. Yeah. Like, like I've been saying this whole time, there's, there's no, I don't hold anything back. I mean, it's a, it's an eight week program that we get hot and heavy into, um, you know, number one, where do you actually get your leads from? So if there's some lead sources that I, that I would recommend, um, mm -hmm. what to say, how to go to your, your preview appointment, how to not be salesy, what to give that person when you actually, so there's a lot of material that I give away in the program, uh, your listing presentation, you get a role play partner. I mean, we go through every single thing that you would need to list one or two FISBOs a week, a week. So six to eight FISBOs a month. And so, um, and people are getting these results, brand new agents in the business, 30 days in the business. I mean, they're meeting with FISBOs uh, as we speak face to face right now. So there's two different types of content, you know, and you know, there's sit up content and there's sit back content. So the sit back content is like, you're watching your favorite thing on Netflix. You're sitting there chilling, having a beer. You're not interacting, right? Yep. Sit up content is you're sitting forward, you're interacting, you're, you're work, you're going through the process. What kind of class is this? Is this kind of sit back and, and, mm. and, and chill or sit up and like interact with the other participants? Yeah, it's all interactive. So we host the entire eight week program in zoom. So similar to like how you and I are doing right now, and it's 100% interactive. So there is no, I mean, uh, week one's a little bit more lecture style, but the next seven weeks is hardcore boot camp. You're getting uncomfortable, tons of live role play, live coaching. You're walking away from each coaching session. You're actually feeling yourself get better. And then you take what you learn on that, uh, that training session for the week and you're matched up with another role play accountability partner for eight weeks with another agent going through the program with you. Mm -hmm. And you get to practice what you learned every single week and making sure that you're executing on, you know, the direct mail letter and all the marketing materials that we give to you. So it's very interactive. So take me back a little bit. When you yeah. first started in real estate, where, where, what were you doing and when did this transformation take place to go for Fizzbumps? Because I know yeah. people are probably wondering about that because they're like, dude, this guy's killing it. You know, I can't be like this dude. He's probably came out of the womb, just a, 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 a you know, a mad genius. You know, take me through that chronological chronological change. Yeah. So uh, I had a huge, I guess, uh, huge advantage when I got into real estate. Here's why. When I I started in the mortgage business when I was about 22 years old. Um, this is about 12 years ago. And the model at this mortgage company is not like your traditional loan officer who's calling real estate agents trying to get referrals. We were 100%, Greg, internet lead phone sales based. So wow. I was making one, two, three, 400 phone calls for six years in a row. All I knew was how to sell over the phone. That's all I knew how to do. So what I, what I learned was how much more you can make in real estate than I was making <laughs> in the mortgage side of things. And so I said, geez, I mean, because I used to watch all these podcasts and, and some people doing their prospecting and, and saw their skill set on the phone. And I said, you know what, dude, like I got to take these skills that I've honed in for the last six years in the mortgage business mm -hmm. and um, use it to become a top listing agent and ended up my first year in the business. I got the numbers right here doing 115 close uh, transactions for a little over 21 million and made 575 grand my first year in the business. <laughs> that doesn't suck. <laughs> oh, no. And so, you know, the breakdown, you know, and so the breakdown of that was, you know, uh, most of it was listings. I started off, um, I, the cool thing about this whole thing was, number one, I see the value in coaching. So I had a coach, Greg, before mm. I even had a real estate license. So I was getting coached and I understood what I had to do when I got into the business before I even started in the business. So I had a coach. I had a full-time assistant from day one. Now, do I recommend that for most new agents? Probably not, but I did it right. I had money saved up and all those types of things. So I had a full-time assistant. So I was only focused on dollar productive activities from day one. And it was all listing based because I also had a full-time buyer's agent from day one because mm -hmm. I knew the path to, t uh, path to production, as I call it, was all on the listing side of the business. So um, it was all focused on prospecting six, seven, eight hours a day, um, outworking the competition and having much better conversations than these other agents. And so what ended up happening is we had uh, on the listing side, 72 of the 115 was listings, 43 wow. were buyer sides. Wow. And so, um, yeah, man, I just I focused on, on, on listings.
Something unique you said there, a couple of things. One, you were proactive, not reactive when it came to getting education on what you needed to do in the business. You you didn't say like, well, when I get into it, I'll, I'll kind of figure it out. No, you, you before you jumped in, you were already getting coached. You hit the ground running. You looked at what successful models were already doing, and he copied them. That's it's it. Ex- the wheel is round, guys. You don't need to go make a triangle wheel because you think it looks better. You know, Brandon went out and just did what everybody needs to do and spent the money to do it. And in return, you made what, 500 and change thousand dollars your first year? Yep. Right? I mean, and you probably haven't come off of that. You've only grown from that because of your reputation. And I believe there is something that you're 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 doing that's gonna be pretty interesting here down the road pretty soon. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not on air. Um you let me know. We can talk about it. But you know what? It's pretty dang interesting, I think. And yeah, I think I mean, it's a result. Yeah, I mean, I, um, to your point, I mean, there, there is no magic pill. You know, I wear this bracelet every day. And what it says, Greg, is consistent action is the magic pill. And there's no secrets in this business. There is no secrets in this business. I just no. did exactly what you just said. I found somebody who was doing what I wanted to do and did exactly what they were doing. And that was it. You know, I, you, uh, real estate agents need to treat this like an actual job. They have to have a plan and understand that they're getting into the sales business and they'll be just fine. And so, um, you know, I'm taking this entire philosophy and mindset of giving and, and, and helping others. And we, we have plans to uh, shortly here um, kind of uh, this is the first time we're announcing this live, you know, opening a real estate brokerage firm to take everything that we've done and uh, transferring that to the real estate agents in our, in, our, in our marketplace and giving to these agents because there are good people in this business. Um, I just think that they're getting a lot of bad information and they're not getting the leadership and the coaching and the training that they need to reach their highest potential in this business. Because I'm sick of seeing agents fail when they don't have to fail if they had the right mentorship. Dude, I fucking love you, man. That, you and I, we live in different parts of the country, but we have the same exact heart for this business. I mean, there. I think, like we talked about, the the era of the tyrannical, you know, coach who is, you know, King Tut up on their throne is going to be coming to an end because this stuff was not available two years ago. I mean, yeah. three years ago, five years ago, this wasn't even thinkable. And although, you know, King Tut up on the thrones, and you guys can all think of the individuals you probably are thinking about, probably right. Yep. But people like Brandon, they are in the trenches. Like I'm in the trenches. We're not taking advice from our advisory board. We're fucking doing it. And I think that's the new coach. That's the new brokerage owner. That's the new mega team leader. Because these guys, dude, we we have the lashes on our back and we have the bruises and the broken bones and the lack of blood that we bled out on this trail of this business to prove it that other people would want to follow. Not people that stand up and get us all excited and then we all go home and put our books on our shelves. Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm just going to say, I mean, it's just a shame. It's just not fair to these real estate agents getting into the business where, you know, they pass their exam. They're super excited. They've made promises to their spouses about, hey, I'm going to leave my corporate job where I'm making $100,000 a year and do this real estate thing to quickly find out that at these brokerage companies, they're not getting any training, no coaching, no support, no culture, no leads. Um, and they're not getting yes. the, they're not getting anything that they need. Um, to succeed in this business. And so I always say it's not their fault. You know, the the failure rate's so high, but for the most part, it's not the agent's fault. It's the lack of leadership that we are providing these agents is what I see the problem. And that's mm-hmm. where our, we believe our company fits into the marketplace because of that culture and that leadership and no agent left behind mentality. Couldn't agree with you more. I absolutely love the words coming out of your mouth. I was the head trainer for my brokerage for a while. There was a, a, a differing of the minds, you might say, with the upper management. And yeah. I separated from from doing their leadership. Their, their training went to zero, absolutely zero. Yeah. Today, I came in and uh, there's a new guy who just joined the, uh, the, the, the our brokerage. Like He's literally getting signed up today. He walked right into my office because of the videos that I'm doing, like the videos you're doing. And he goes, I've been watching what you're doing. This is absolutely amazing. I've learned more in your in three podcasts than I have learned in talking to anybody else. I'll do anything it takes to work with you. And it struck me as something. 
if me just messing around on a camera, you just messing around on the camera can educate someone where they want to, where they can go benefit themselves. I think that's tremendous. And I want you guys to all go do what we're doing in your special niche so that more agents, so the trickle down effect will, will happen. All of us will become better. Yeah, exactly. Because of all of us giving. That's right. I mean, it's, you, it's what you just said happens to me almost every day. I make these little, uh, what I think, um, insignificant videos of me calling for sale by owners and then an agent coming uh, turning around saying, dude, I've never made a prospecting call in my career and I'm meeting with for sale by owners after watching one video and yeah. uh, saying things just like you, like I don't get any of this at my company or my brokerage. And it's just, you know, it's just too, it's, it's just sad. That's all. It really is. But you know what? The, a lot of the times these brokerages, they don't see that. I was with a, another company, my first company before, I'm in my third company now. Uh, but our first company, the owner of it, he made his billions in janitorial supplies. Mm. And so he didn't, he, his value was in the actual physical brick and mortar structure of the property, not the people that went to work in it every single day. He learned a big lesson. We walked out on him one day, completely picked up and moved out one morning. He, he, he wow. found out the value of who, who, where it belongs. But, um, you know, when it comes to the training and everything that you're doing, you know, I'm getting a couple of questions here in the news feed. What's a good script? So Matt asked this, what is a script? Uh, that you guys would recommend for a FISBO. So is there something that you that you kind of use as your go-to, like your, your your silver bullet script? Yeah, so why don't we role play? You be the FISBO that just hit the market today, and then I'll just be me. How's that? Sure. Do you want me to be cranky or just super pumped I'm on the market? Yeah, just super pumped that you're on the market, right? Because there's no reason for you to be cranky yet. I mean, you, you probably went on the market at 9 a.m., and I'm on the phone with you at 9.15, okay? Okay, cool. So, ring, ring. Hey, hello. Hey, Greg, Brandon here from XYZ Realty. See that you just put your house on the market. I was just curious, did you accept an offer or is it uh, still available by chance? I would love to accept an offer. Honey, we got our first person looking for this to buy our house. I mean, do you have a buyer? I mean, are you a buyer? Yeah, great question. So uh, I'm a local real estate agent. And so my first question is, you know, are you guys open to working with real estate agents who are to bring you a qualified buyer? No, no, no. I mean, no, that, that, well, that's what we're going to do. You know, I, I've read some books on it and I, I think we can do a pretty good job at it. And, you know, yeah, well, I think we're good right now, but I appreciate you asking. Yeah, sounds good. So let me ask you, Greg, how long are you going to try and sell the home on your own before you explore other options? I don't know. I guess as long as I have to, right? I mean, it's a lot of money we're talking about. I, I don't know what I've been seeing on TV and the news and the market seems pretty good. So I don't know, like maybe a couple of weeks, maybe. Sure. Okay. And if uh, a couple of weeks come and go, and for whatever reason you can't sell it, which I think you can, I mean, looking at the home here online, it looks amazing. Uh, for whatever reason, you can't sell it on your own. Do you have a close friend or family member that's in the real estate business who you feel, Greg, you'd be obligated to work for, or you'd be open to maybe meeting with some other agents? I, we, I haven't even really thought about it. You know, that's kind of why we became a FISBO. You know, I, I like using that. It's a, an official real estate term, FISBO. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we figured we could give it a run on our own. It's a lot of money to pay an agent. And, I mean, from what I've seen that you guys do, you put a sign in the yard, you do some magical thing in the background, and presto change it, and you sell a house, and you make it a lot of money. And that money makes a lot of, you know, make, makes a big difference to my family. Yeah, no doubt. And I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, again, chances are, I mean, there's a good chance you can sell the house on your own. So I tell you what. Uh, Obviously, you're looking to sell the home so that you can put the most amount of money in your pocket. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Right. So let's do this, Greg. Why don't we do this? Why don't you invite me over for 15 or 20 minutes? Show me around the home. Because in the meantime, while you're trying to sell it on your own, I'll be out doing the same thing with my team, trying to bring you qualified buyers. Fair enough? Yeah. But so do I have to pay you if you bring a buyer? Yeah. So no, we're, the only thing I want to do today is actually see the home. Right. I want to see what okay. you have to offer and, um, and see what we can't do to help you get the home sold by any means necessary. Are you home typically in the afternoons or you and your wife home in the evenings? Uh, well, we both work. She's a teacher, so she's home before I am. But I'm generally with traffic, give or take, 536 ish. All right. So I tell you what, I don't mind at all. I'm going to stop by tomorrow. I'm going to put you on the counter for around 630. And I'd love to just see the house and kind of go from there. Fair enough. Sure. If you want to bring a buyer, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. Okay, great. So I'll put you on here. I'll see you tomorrow at 630 and uh, looking forward to meeting you and your wife. Okay. And it was Brandon, Brandon. right? 
Brandon. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Greg. Thanks. Bye bye. And so the whole strategy is I don't care what the FISBO tells me. I just agree with it 100%. There is no overcoming any objections on the phone because we are only trying to get face to face. Because here's what I know, Greg the second you and I meet face to face, we can build a connection and everything is different. Here's what I always teach agents. Don't even listen to what they're saying on the phone because everything <laughs> will be different when you meet them face to face. And in three weeks from now, everything will be different. I list homes all the time with for sale by owners, Greg, that tell me I will never list a home. I'd rather die than list a home with an agent and I'm listing their home, right? So that's why I say these agents get caught up with what the FISBO is saying on the phone. Don't yeah. even listen. Agree 100%. All you're trying to do is get there to meet them. That's all you want to do. That's step number one. So exactly. it doesn't matter. You don't have to overcome objections. You don't have to say anything. You just agree with them and say, when can we meet? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, that is awesome stuff. I mean, it's kind of like being on a bad date when someone's just talking like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Tell me more. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. That's nice. Great. Let's meet up. And that's... <laughs> You know, it, it it comes down to that I mean, just body language, you know, getting to know the other human being, being able to go into the environment. When I do door knocking, one of the things that I do when I approach the property, and I know you do this because I that's you. I mean, we're we basically were separated at birth and we share the same yep. brain. Um, you know, oops, pulled my mic down. Um, is that I go in and on the approach to the to the house, I find some sort of aspect about the home that I really like. So it's the garden gnome, it's the cards, the shutters, the porch, the grass, the flowers, whatever, right? And I get in there and you can use it on the inside of the house to use this as a continuous, you know, conversation starter and bonding opportunity. And, you know, ask their opinion on things and really go from there. That's what I do. But I mean, it, do you do something along those lines or do you have a more of a set script that you stick to when you actually step foot into the house? So my whole approach, uh, we talked so much about this contribution thing. My whole approach is, believe it or not, and this is something that a lot of amateur salespeople are uh, completely terrified to do is I almost try and talk them out of listing their home with me. Now, I know what most agents are thinking right now, like, what the, what is he talking about? So I say things like this, Greg. Um, you know, the only reason, Greg, you would even think about hiring me to, to list and sell your home is if I can get you more money than you can. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And I use, right, and I use that NLP or that neuro linguistic mm -hmm. to say things that they have to agree with me. So I say things like, you would, you would never list your home with me if you put more money in your pocket without an agent than with an agent. Am I right? Yeah, no, I'd never do that. No. Right. And so I keep going down that path because right. every other agent is like, list your home, list your home, list your home, list your home. And I'm telling them the exact opposite. I almost make it their idea to put their house on the market with me, not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's absolutely brilliant uh, because I, I was called the pullback method. And, you, know, right. you know, you know, you say, well, you know, hey, maybe I'm not the right agent for you. You know, I might I'm, I want to make sure that you're the right client for me. All of a sudden, like the fuck you say, I mean, I, you are listing my house, sir. You are you listing my it. house. You got it. But it, 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 so to go to the point of fear, I, uh, I, want, I remember I remember going on a listing appointment with my father, and this is whew, 15 plus years ago. And dude, I had hustled hard for the appointment. I'd done my follow up. I hit the phones, and I finally got into this house. Beautiful home, very saleable. And I wanted to strangle my father when he goes, looks at him, and goes, "I just don't know if this is the right time for you to sell." And and then like, I don't know if we're the right team for you. I'm sitting there going. What are you doing, you insane human? Yeah. And it, it, but they came full circle. They're like, well, it, this is the right time for us, and this is why. And we've been watching you, and we know we we think you're the right agent, right agent for us. Why? And I and I, I just just baffled at the grandmaster at his you know mental ninja gymnastics. And I'm like, this was something to take notice of. And you're doing the exact same thing uh, yeah. in your marketplace. It's such a deep rooted. Um, ability to connect with another human being, detaching yourself from the outcome and mm. putting someone before your own needs. And the second someone sees that is the very moment, Greg, where they want to do business with you. Yeah. It's the yeah. very moment. But if they sense for a second that you're selling them or you're looking to do, you know what I mean? Uh, everything's changes. Now you find yourself overcoming objections and having to sell and hard close. Just take that off the table 
um, and, and not be attached to that commission. And I think agents will find that uh, they don't have to have guts to do what we're talking about. It'll come natural and more people will be attracted and asking them to do business versus having to hard close and ask for the signature and sign here. You know what I mean? You don't have to do any of that shit. <laughs> Press R, there's three copies. Yeah. You know, n none of that stuff. And this is, I mean, I, we're going to have you back, man. This is absolutely epic stuff. I love where you're coming from. Great mindset, contribution. You're you're making sure that it's, it's the right move for the client. You you don't bind them down into a contract. You give them the ability to get out. I mean, you're like a big fluffy teddy bear that they just want to hug because it's right. not gonna I mean, it's not gonna bite them. It's not you're not, they're not gonna be treated like a piece of meat. So yeah, dude, yeah. where can everyone find you? Yeah, so uh, two ways. You can call my personal cell phone because I just want the real estate agent community to get everything that they need to reach their goals and their dreams for their family. So you can call me on my personal cell phone, 248-890-5504, or you can just shoot me an email anytime that you want, brandon at brandonmulrennan.com. Epically awesome stuff. Guys, I appreciate it uh, for you guys being here. As you guys know, this show is sponsored by Get Now Business. Uh, it's the show that is the class that Matt and I host. Uh, our next sign up as of this recording is going to be October 3rd at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So go to getnowbusiness.com. If you guys want to do no door knocking, no cold calling, and have a budget of $500 or less on a monthly budget, this is the course for you. If you listen to what we have to say and you listen to what Brandon has to say on Fizbo's, guys, this is going to be what you will get business in 90 days or less. Also, go sign up uh, for, his, for his group, Top Agent uh, Hangout, and just kind of going to be around him, be around the people that are in there. If you guys are interested in doing you know, FISBOs, this has been one of the best shows that I've ever done when it comes to content. You're logical, you're smart, you're kind, and you're client-minded, and you're not commission-minded, which makes a massive, massive difference so any last words my friend before we let everyone go no i just would i would just say number one thanks for having me but more importantly for all the agents looking out there or watching this you know you can have everything you want in this business i promise you it's the greatest business on the planet you can have everything that you want you can hold true to those promises that you've made to your spouse and your children you just have to have a plan you have to have a coach and surround yourself with people who care yeah, you really do, guys. You're going to be the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with, so don't make them douchebags. All right, guys, till next time, peace out, ninjas. We gone.